Good morning, everyone. I am Pastor Kyle of the Gate Church. Uh, we're continuing on in our Acts series. I'll be picking up in Acts chapter 9, reading from verse 32 down to verse 43. And it says, Now as Peter went here and there among them all, he came down also to the saints who lived at Lydda. There he found a man named Aeneas, bedridden for eight years, who was paralyzed. And Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus heals you. Rise up and make your bed. And immediately he rose and all the residents of Lydda and Sharon saw him and they turned to the Lord. Now there was in Joppa a disciple named Tabitha, which translated means darkest. She was full of good works and acts of charity. In those days she became ill and died. And when they had washed her, they laid her in an upper room. Since little was near Joppa, the disciples, hearing Peter was there, sent two men to him, urging him, Please come to us without delay. So Peter rose and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the upper room. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other garments that Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all outside and knelt down and prayed. And turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up and he gave her his hand and raised her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he presented her alive. And it became known throughout all Joppa and many believed in the Lord. And he stayed in Joppa for many days with one Simon a Tanner church let's pray dear God there is much going on in our world there is much going on in the hearts of people today dear Lord there's a wide range of emotions dear Lord but we lay it all before you we ask dear God that you will intervene Lord God I believe you have given us this word today for our souls and 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 for our comfort and so I pray that you speak to your people edify our souls in Christ's name we pray amen amen uh Church, if you don't get anything else from our time together, I pray that you receive this into your hearts. And it is the reality that there is hope in Jesus. I want to say it again. If you're, if you're listening, please hear me. I know it's a lot going on in our world, but please hear this. There is hope in Jesus. Church, I know we live in a time of skepticism and cynicism where the prevalent thought is that people are who they are and that things will be what they're going to be. I come from a place where they say, man, it just is what it is. But church, that kind of attitude and that kind of mindset is demoralizing. It is deflating. It does not create an environment to want to see better or to even will for something different. But here's the thing for us who are believers, us who are Christians. See, we have to be different. We have to be a sounding board. We have to be the ones who know and understand that there is not a place or a situation or even a heart that Jesus cannot transform. Yeah, see, if you read the Gospels, that's exactly what you see. Wherever Jesus was, right, wherever his feet went, change followed. I mean, we saw tax collectors become disciples. We saw leopards be healed. We saw blind people uh, given sight. We saw the possessed, demon possessed, given peace. And we saw the dead raised. See, Christ is our Lord and he is our restorer. Even today, with everything that we have been going through, from COVID to turning on the TV and, and seeing a, a African-American men killed in the middle of the street on video, church, all of these things, it weigh on us. Yeah, they create in us anger, emotions of anger and us being afraid. And I'm being honest, I've experienced both from the COVID and the things that I saw this week with the young man. And in our culture, let's be honest, anxieties are running high. A lot of people have lost hope. And it's easy, easy even as a Christian, to kind of slip into this kind of mindset where you just want to throw your hands up. Where you just want to be like, you know what, it, maybe it is just going to be what it is. And I know even sometimes to try to comfort ourselves, we'll try to uh, detach emotionally from these situations. And really the reason why we do that is because we've watched one too many episodes of The Lion King. Um, I know we all like the song Akuna Matata. You know, I sing it. I love the song as well. But I need you to understand something. Akuna Matata is not Bible. No, no, that's not a, a theological or biblical concept. See, we should have no worries for the rest of our days, but not because we don't believe things will change. No, see, we have no worries because we believe in a God who can change everything. Believer, this is what the church is supposed to be. We are, are supposed and are called to be an extension of God's presence throughout the earth. Yeah, his presence of hope. We are called to be his presence of healing and we are called to be his presence of restoration. 
And that's what we see here with Peter in our text. He is bringing hope, the hope of Jesus wherever he went. We see this in Acts 32 through 34. It says this. Now, as Peter went here and there among them all, he came down also to the saints who lived at Lydda. There he found a man named Aeneas, bedridden for eight years, who was paralyzed. And Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you. Rise and make your bed. And immediately he rose. I love the wording here. It says that he went here and there. Um, this was once our reality. It was just a few months ago. I know it seems like an eternity, but this was once our reality, going from school to to work, to, to practices, uh, to hanging out with friends and family. Yeah, we were just kicking it. We were going here and there, restaurants, movies. But this isn't our reality anymore. Many of us are stuck at home. We're immobile. Uh, but as the months go on, I know we will have this kind of life again. We need to take advantage of uh, God pressing pause and allowing us to stop. And to, to be. I was talking to my, my friend Benji this week, and he was talking about how God has given us this opportunity to fast from busyness. We need to take advantage of that. But soon we will all be back up and we will be going here and there again. But as we look in our text, we see that in all Peter's busyness, he did not ignore the issues that God laid before him. We see in the text that Peter sees or meets this man named Aeneas. Uh, and this Aeneas is not the same one who had an NFL career here in St. Louis with the Rams. No, it says that this man was paralyzed and restricted to his bed for eight years. Now, we don't know what happened to him. Had he played for the Rams, we probably would assume it was a football injury, but it was not. I'm sure. I don't know if they played for maybe soccer. They probably had soccer back then. Uh, but we're not sure. Maybe it was a sickness or a disease that this man um, that caused this man's paralysis. Or maybe it was some sort of accident um, that he had. But here's the thing. Regardless of which, Peter sees this man. He sees his plight. He sees his situation. He sees his problem. And Peter not only sees it, but Peter believes that there is hope for change. But my question is, church, is this the lens by which we see everything through? Yeah, through the belief that there is hope for that. Yeah, like for the, for the couple who's been on the rocks for years, do we look at them and say, you know what, there's hope for that marriage. For the young lady who's dealing with depression and, and anxiety, do we say, you know what, there's hope for her emotionally. Yeah, for the racism and division that we see in our culture, do we believe that there is hope for that. For the violence in North City, for the addiction in West County. I know these things have been that way for years, and I know sometimes we can sometimes say that, that, you know what, I can't even imagine it being any other way. But none of that should matter for us as believers. No. All those things we should have in our mind is that, man, they might look that way today, but I know the God that I serve. Yeah, I know the transformational power that he yields. So regardless of how it looks now, I know that there is hope. I'm sure after eight long years that this man and the people who knew him believed his condition was perennial or permanent. But church, that's one of the reasons why I believe that God keeps us here on earth, that he keeps a gospel presence on earth. See, at the moment of our salvation, God can remove his grace. He can remove us from the earth. But I think one of the benefits and the means of grace to our world is that God keeps the Christian here. Yeah, so that we can be like Peter, engaging and speaking the power of Jesus into people's situations. Look at what Peter says to this lame man. He says this, Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you. Rise and make your bed. And it says immediately he rose. Church, our first job is that we must believe. Yeah, believe that Christ will bring change. And then secondly, we must be that change. We must be active, bringing healing and restoration as God's hands and feet throughout the earth. And if we would be this gospel filled presence of hope, it says that many will turn to Jesus. We see this in the healing of Aeneas and with uh, Tabitha being raised from the dead. I'm going to read verses 34 and 35, and then I want to look at Tabitha and read verses 41 and 42. It says this, And Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you. Rise and make your bed. And immediately he rose, and all the residents of Lydda and Sharon saw him, and they turned to the Lord. In verse 41, speaking of Tabitha, and he gave her his hand and raised her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he presented her alive. And it became known throughout all Joppa and many believed in the Lord. Church, when we choose to stop and engage those that others ignore, 
when we choose to love those that others despise, when we choose to walk alongside the person who's been struggling with something for years and everyone else has written them off, in those moments, you and me, we are being like Jesus. See, as you read the Gospels, what you learn is that that was Jesus' ministry, serving people and loving people. Yeah, this is why so many people turned to him because he was willing to enter into things nobody else was willing to touch. All the muck and the mire of people's lives. Yeah, he was willing to be around those no one wanted to be around. All the prostitutes and the handicapped, the thieves and the drunkards. Yeah, while everyone else was trying to stay as far, as far away as possible, Christ was there preaching hope and being hope. Church, sometimes that's just what people need, especially when they're at their lowest. Sometimes all they need to know is that someone cares about them. And please hear me. For anyone who's listening, please hear this. Christ cares. Yeah, the gospel says that Christ cares so much that he gave his life so that all of us can experience a, a newness, a newness spiritually, a newness emotionally. How many of you need to, to experience a, an emotional healing? Well, Christ can do it and he will do it. Also, God will even provide and bring a physical healing. Now, I know that's not popular to talk about in, in church these days, but that's okay. I'll say it. If, if anybody else is afraid to do it, I'll do it. I want you to hear this. Jesus still heals people physically. You see, I talk about it all the time. Our God is immutable. That means he's unchanging. Yeah, so that means that the same God who was healing people in the Old Testament and the same God who was healing people in the Gospels and the same God who was healing people here in Acts and our story today, this is the same God who's at work in our lives and in our situations. And if you don't know his name, his name is Jehovah Rapha. That means our healer, our great physician. See, church, here's the thing. Unless God went to City Hall and filled out a name change application, then that means he is still in the healing business. And all healing is supernatural. Why? Because all healing comes from God. Yeah, he is the great builder and technician of these bodies. Yeah, see, even God has, has wired in our DNA for if we're cut or if we're hurt that our own cells heal us. If that's not a miracle, if that's not supernatural, I don't know what is. Yeah, God even uses doctors. He uses men he, and women. He, 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 he takes their minds and he uses their intellect and science and math to guide them. Yeah, God uses medicine. Yeah, he uses the elements that are found in this world and in nature that can be used to repair our bodies and to cure our illnesses. Yeah, it's all supernatural. Yeah, see, God is concerned with our whole man. That means body and soul. And that's what he uses to draw the hearts of men to himself. Yeah, he uses, uses these things to turn, turn them, turn their hearts and to cause them to trust him. Another thing that God uses is that he uses prayer. Yeah, the Bible says that God uses the prayer of the saints. That's talking about Christians. Yeah, I, see, I don't understand why passages like James, James 5, uh, we act like they've been deleted or erased from our Bibles. I don't understand why so many ignore passages like these. Uh, James 5, 13 through 15 says this. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Church, in this passage, God tells us to come to him in prayer, asking for healing in faith. Now, I know we have some theologians that are tuning in, and so I want to be clear. If you go back to this passage and you look up the word faith here in the Greek, it actually means faith. <laughs> Who would have thought? Yeah, it actually means faith. It actually means to put your hope and trust in him who is able. Yeah, church, God can and will heal. And, and, and often, matter of fact, he's healing more than he's not. And man, if I could change anything, I was thinking about this. If I could change anything about new age evangelicalism, it would be this. That we would believe that what God's word says is true. Yeah, and also that we would start to walk it out. 
Yeah, now I'm not talking about the walk it out the dance or the song by Big Unk. I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is us as Christians believing God's word is true and then us walking it out with faith and with confidence. Yeah, and church, I believe if we do this, yeah, we will start to see a powerful movement of God in churches. We'll start to see a powerful movement of God in our community. Church, don't let the process. I know many of us come from the, the old school black church. And, but here's the thing. Don't let nobody uh, uh, make you start to demonize the black, the black church. The black church raised us. It did us well. Amen and amen. I love it. However, I know there's been some in the process who have preached the prosperity gospel. Listen, don't let the prosperity movement keep you from praying in faith. And I talked about this for maybe a couple weeks ago. Those of us who come from more of a reformed background, please do not allow your theology to become so objective that there's no room for verses like these in James. Man, as I begin to close, our last point is that we need to be a faithful witness. Yeah. I won't reread re the story of Tabitha, but I do want to uh, read verses 38 and 39a. It says this. Since little was near Joppa, the disciples, hearing that Peter was there, sent two men urging him, please come to us without delay. So Peter rose and went with them. Church, what we see here is that Peter was used to bring healing, healing to not only Aeneas, but also he calls upon Jesus to raise Tabitha. But there is a difference. Um, this time, Peter doesn't go and find Tabitha like he did with Aeneas. No, it says that Tabitha's loved ones come and find Peter. Notice that. Yeah, they seek him out. Now, now why is that? I want you to think about why would they go seek Peter out? I mean, the text says that Tabitha wasn't still sick anymore. It says that she was dead. I mean, I mean, death means that it was over. Her life had ended. I don't know a more hopeless situation than death. But church, they didn't. They were there, they were in that house, and they didn't have all the answers or solutions. But blessed be the name of the Lord that they heard of a man that gave them hope. Yeah, and it wasn't so much that, that it was Peter that gave them hope. It was the fact that Peter knew the one who could change any situation. Hmm. Church, will we be the ones in our families? Will we be the ones on our jobs, the ones in our schools and in our communities who people identify as the ones who have hope? Yeah, see, I've been identified as a lot of things in my life, as the troublemaker, as the, as the class clown, as, as the party guy. But you know what? I thank God that today I am able to be in people's lives and I'm identified as the one who believes in Jesus. Yeah, I've been identified and able to be identified as the one who cares about people's situations, that I can be the one who is identified as one who will listen, who's willing to pray and who's willing to come when people are hurting or struggling. Beloved, if no one else is willing to go and to help those who are hurting and struggling, it, then it should be the church, the people of God. Yeah, just like Peter in our text. Church, every situation that people face, do you understand that the answer is found in Jesus? And if that's the case, then we need to be the one who are his ambassadors in this world, preaching hope preaching peace, and preaching that God is our great restorer. Amen. Enjoy your Sunday.